Welcome to the Endless Knot. Today we're going to ask, what's the earliest English word? Then I'll be asking you for your opinion at the end, so stick around for the poll. Language change is a bit like boiling the proverbial frog. You don't notice how much a language has altered until you look back. It's hard to pick the point when English became English. Broadly speaking, English is the language that grew out of the collection of dialects spoken by Germanic mercenaries, invaders, and settlers such as the Angles, Saxons, and Jutes who came to Britain in the 5th century. It has changed a lot since that earliest form, now known as Old English, spoken by the people known as the Anglo-Saxons, but it is still all considered one language, English. Of course we can't know what the first spoken word in this language was, so what we're looking for is the earliest surviving written English word. So what's the earliest English writing we have? It's often said that the oldest Old English text to be written down was the Law Code of King Athelbert of Kent, composed in the early 7th century sometime before Athelbert died in 616, but after Augustine came to England to become Archbishop of Canterbury in 597, converting Athelbert to Christianity, making him the first Anglo-Saxon Christian king. The first sentence of the document reads, This syndon tha domas the Athelbert kining a seta on Augustinus die. These are the laws which King Athelbert established in Augustine's day. So then, is the earliest word this? Well, the problem is that the earliest surviving copy of this law code is a very late Old English manuscript from the early 12th century, and who knows how much it's changed in the recopying over the years, and if that sentence was even in the original. For the earliest Old English text that survives in its original form, not a later copy, we have to go to an inscription on an artifact. One such artifact is the Franks Casket, a whalebone chest believed to date from the early 8th century. It's richly decorated with both pictures and inscriptions, written mostly in Anglo-Saxon runes. There isn't really a beginning to the various texts inscribed on the Franks Casket, but the front panel which contains pictures of the Germanic legend of Wayland the Smith and the biblical story of the Adoration of the Magi has inscribed on it a riddle about the makeup of the casket itself. Fish flodu a hof on fergen berry. Wath gazrich gron thar he on greut ye swum, or the flood cast up the fish on the mountain cliff. The terror king became sad when he swam on the sand. The answer to the riddle is given as hronasban, whale's bone, and it's a whale to which the first word of the text, fish, is referring. By the way, the Frank's casket also contains a picture of the brothers Romulus and Remus being suckled by a she wolf, connected with the legendary foundations of Rome and an obscure picture including a horse which some have identified as a reference to the legendary foundations of Anglo-Saxon England with the two brothers Hengist meaning stallion and Horsa meaning horse, the first two of those mercenaries invited to Britain. And it's to that foundation period of Anglo-Saxon England that we turn next. Because while the Franks cask contains perhaps the earliest extended text of Old English literature, there are artifacts from the earlier migration period with shorter inscriptions such as the Unley Bracteate, found in Unley Common near Lakenheath, Suffolk, which dates to some time in the later 5th century, perhaps between 450 and 480. A Bracteate is a coin-like medallion which was apparently worn as jewellery. The Unley Bracteate contains a runic inscription which is the earliest example of the Anglo-Saxon variety of runes, as opposed to the slightly different common Germanic Elder Futhark. So this therefore would be a strong candidate for the earliest English writing. The inscription is a little hard to interpret, however. It reads, Gagoga, Maga Medu. The last two words are clear enough, meaning reward for relatives, presumably referring to the Bracteate itself, similar to the Frank's Casket whalebone riddle. Neither word really makes it to modern English, except perhaps the fairly archaic mead, not the honey wine that the Anglo Saxons drank, but M E E D, meaning reward. The first series of characters, however, has sparked much debate. One possibility is that it represents a war cry. There is another artifact, called the Kragohol I lance shaft, which was found on Funen, Denmark, which also has a runic inscription that includes the similar string of runic characters, Gagaga. -ga -ga. A war cry would certainly make sense on a spear shaft. Another suggestion for the Gagoga -ga of the Ungli Bracteate is that it means Howling She-Wolf, in reference to the picture on the Bracteate of the She-Wolf suckling Romulus and Remus, just like that picture we saw before in the Franks casket. So the entire phrase would then mean this she-wolf to a kinsman is a reward. A third possibility is that Gagoga represents some kind of magical incantation or formula. 
Another similar bracteate, called the Seelin 2C bracteate, which was found on Zeelin, Denmark, has an inscription which means, Haryuha I am called, the dangerous knowledgeable one, I give chance. And that last phrase, I give chance or luck, is often used to argue that bracteates are some kind of magical amulets. So perhaps the Undli bracteate too is some kind of lucky charm, and gagoga is our earliest English word, we just don't know what it means. Our next candidate is more understandable. At Caister St. Edmund in Norfolk, an urn was found containing over 30 astragalus bones, otherwise known as talus or ankle bones, presumably gaming pieces. All but one of the bones in the urn are from sheep, that one exception is from a roe deer, and has inscribed on it the word raihan, meaning roe, and in fact we get the modern English word roe from this. So again, like the Franks casket naming its material, this gaming piece names itself as the one roe bone in the bunch. The find was dated to circa 425 to 475, so possibly earlier than the Undley Bracteate, making this potentially the earliest inscription found in Anglo-Saxon England. The catch with this word Raihan though is that it's inscribed in the runes of the Elder Futhark variety, from the mainland, rather than Anglo-Saxon runes. It's believed these game pieces may have been brought over by one of the invading Germanic warriors coming to Britain. So does it count as English? Oh, and what game exactly were they used to play? Well, one popular game at the time is now known as Knuckle Bones, though as we've seen actually played with ankle bones. Much like modern jacks, you put one bone on the back of your hand, throw it up in the air, and pick another from the ground, then you catch the one you threw up, continuing on like this adding one bone each time. So do you want to place your bet on this word? Both these inscriptions come from the Anglo-Saxon migration period when it was said Hengist and Horsa arrived in England bringing their troop of warriors with them around the middle of the 5th century. For our next candidate for the earliest English word, we turn to an account of that invasion itself, not from the Anglo-Saxons, but from the indigenous Britons. The Celtic writer Gildas wrote about the fall of Britain to those Germanic invaders, and in doing so he seems to have preserved a word of these Anglo-Saxons. Gildas was writing in Latin, but he uses a non-Latin word in his text. Tum erumpens grex catulorum de cubili leaenae barbarae, tribus ut lingua eius experimentur culus nostra longis nauibus which means, then a pack of cubs burst forth from the lair of the barbarian lioness in three culus, as they call longships in their language. Gildas presumably got this word culus, meaning longships, from some Germanic source, and indeed the word reappears in Old English as keol in later Old English texts, such as the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle which was compiled starting in the late 9th century recounting the arrival of Hengist and Horsa, on theora dagum yelavada virtjorn angelkin hider and he tha common on Thrym Keolum hira to Britanna, meaning, in their days Vortigern invited the Angle race here, and they then came in three ships here to Britain. So although the word first occurs in a Latin context, it could be said to be the earliest recovered word of written Old English. But speaking of the Angles, what about them and their language? Well, again we can turn to Latin contexts, specifically the ethnographic writings of the Roman author Tacitus, who way back around the year 98 wrote a book called Germania, in which he describes the various Germanic tribes that had come into contact with the Romans. One tribe he mentions he calls the Anglii, which seems quite plausibly to be the Angles who three and a half centuries later would invade Britain and give us the modern term English. And what does Angle mean? Well, it seems to refer to their homeland, now known as Angeln, in the part of Germany known as Schleswig-Holstein, which kind of has a hook-like shape, and that's what the name seems to mean, fishhook. Remember that fishy whale on the Franks casket? That name Angle is therefore related to the modern word angler, another word for fisherman. It in fact goes back to an Indo-European root which means to bend, and gives us the other word angle, as in corner, through Latin, as well as the word ankle which by the way means that that previous possible earliest English word row is written on an ankle or English bone. As a name, in fact, it's always been ripe for wordplay. Pope Gregory the Great, who sent Augustine to Canterbury to become Archbishop and convert the Anglo-Saxons to Christianity, was inspired to do so when he saw a couple of fair-haired, pale-skinned Anglo-Saxon boys for sale in the slave market in Rome, and upon hearing they were Angles, punned that they were non-Angli said Angeli not angles, but angels. 
and when he heard that they were from the Northumbrian kingdom of Deira, he said that they should be saved Deira from wrath. And finally, on learning that the king of that land was named Alla, he simply replied, Alleluia. Turns out, holy father jokes are even worse than dad jokes. So perhaps in a sense, English itself is the earliest English word, at least in the form Anglii, found in a Latin text, though one whose earliest surviving manuscript dates from the 15th century, well after the Anglo-Saxon period. But if we accept it anyway, the irony is that it predates the English language itself. So what do you think should count as the earliest English word? The laws of Athelbert and its opening word this? The Frank's casket with its first word fish? The Unlibractiate with its possibly magical gagoga? The Caster by Norwich gaming piece with Rehan on it? The Culis that the Anglo-Saxons used to come to Britain? Vote now in the poll and comment to let me know the reason for your choice. Or if you think none of these is right, and it's actually the word Anglii, English itself, you can say so in the comments, since the poll only allows five choices. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed these etymological explorations and cultural connections, please subscribe to this channel and share it. And check out our Patreon where you can make a contribution to help me make more videos. I'm at Alliterative on Twitter, and you can read more of my thoughts on my blog at alliterative.net. Speaking of the Anglo-Saxon migration and Hengist, Torsa, and Vortigern, if you head over to Jabsy's channel, you can see a video about the Anglo-Saxon invasions that we made together for his 3-minute history series, with lots more details about the 5th century.